Hello, this is Ron Paul with your weekly update for December 26. Little by little, in the name of fighting terrorism, our Bill of Rights is being repealed. The Fourth Amendment has been rendered toothless by the Patriot Act. No more can we truly feel secure in our persons, houses, papers, and effects when now there is an exception that fits nearly any excuse for our government to search and seize our property. Of course, the vast majority of Americans may say, I'm not a terrorist, so I have nothing to hide. However, innocent people are wrongly accused all the time. The Bill of Rights is there precisely because the founders wanted to set a high bar for the government to overcome in order to deprive an individual of life or liberty. To lower that bar is to endanger everyone. When the bar is low enough to include political enemies, our descent into totalitarianism is virtually assured. The Patriot Act, as bad as its violations of the Fourth Amendment was, just one step down the slippery slope. The recently passed National Defense Authorization Act continues that slip toward tyranny and, in fact, accelerates it significantly. The main section of concern, Section 1021 of the NDAA Conference Report, does to the Fifth Amendment what the Patriot Act does to the Fourth. The Fifth Amendment is about much more than the right to remain silent in the face of government questioning. It contains very basic and very critical stipulations about the due process of law. The government cannot imprison a person for no reason and with no evidence presented or access to legal counsel. The danger of the NDAA are its alarmingly vague, undefined criteria for who can be indefinitely detained by the U.S. government without trial. It is now no longer limited to members of al-Qaeda or the Taliban, but anyone accused of substantially supporting such groups or associated forces. How closely associated and what constitutes substantial support? What if it was discovered that someone who committed a terrorist act was once involved with a charity? Or suppose it's a political candidate. Are all donors of that charity or supporters of that candidate now suspect and subject to indefinite detainment? Is that charity now an associated force? Additionally, this legislation codifies in law for the first time authority to detain Americans that has to this point only been claimed by President Obama. According to subsection E of section 1021, quote, nothing in this section shall be construed to affect existing laws or authorities relating to the detention of United States citizens, lawful residents, aliens of the United States, or any other persons who are captured or arrested in the United States, close quote. This means the President's widely expanded view of his own authority to detain Americans and definitely even on American soil is for the first time in this legislation codified in law. That should chill all of us to our cores. The Bill of Rights has no exceptions for really bad people or terrorists or even non-citizens. It is a key check on government power against any person. That is not a weakness in our legal system. It is the very strength of our legal system. The NDAA attempts to justify abridging the Bill of Rights on the theory that rights are suspended in the time of war and the entire United States is a battlefield in the war on terror. This is a very dangerous development indeed. Beware. Thanks for calling this update. A new update is placed on this number, 888-322-1414, every Monday. The written text can be found on my website, www.house.gov. Thanks for calling.